Hi folks. If you are seeing this message, then you are watching the version of the video that has been uploaded to the Virtual Cocktails and Music channel on YouTube. I decided that probably wasn't a great name for a, a channel that was featuring sacred music. Uh, some of you may know it started off as uh, uh, actual programs, 30-minute programs, where we featured cocktails and music and themes and everything. And we haven't uh, given up. We just did season one. We haven't. We're, we're in no go. We're in negotiation for season two right now. So we haven't uh, completely abandoned the thought of doing another season of virtual cocktails and music. But we thought we would um, uh, move off the um, the sacred music to a new channel that's called Music for the Spirit. Uh, there's a link to it on uh, the uh, Virtual Cocktails and Music channel, so you can see it there. But if you're subscribed to Virtual Cocktails and Music, um, uh, then, then you know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and I would request that you uh, also subscribe, subscribe to Music for the Spirit. Uh, if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you're getting these via email links, then don't worry about anything. You'll continue to get them. No, nothing for you to, to worry about at all. You don't have to mess with YouTube. But for those who are using YouTube and sub YouTube subscriptions, um, I would request that you uh, subscribe to the uh, Music for the Spirit channel. And we'll see you there. This is without a doubt my most elaborate undertaking yet. But this is one of those hymns that mandates you either go big or go home. The music comes from an orchestral work written in 1918 by British composer Gustav Holst entitled The Planets, and it's one of two melodies that Holst used for the planet Jupiter. And he called the tune Thaxted after the English village where he lived most of his life. It first appeared as a hymn when his good friend Rayfon Williams included it in his Songs of Praise in 1926, just eight years before Holst's passing. And there are at least two dozen separate hymns that use it as their melody today. It was used at the wedding of Charles and Diana, and at Diana's funeral, and at the funeral of Margaret Thatcher. Needless to say, it's very popular in the UK, probably more so than in the US. Our friend Ellie requested it over lunch one day. Yes, I do take requests. Uh, and I later discovered that it is a favorite of another friend across the pond in the UK, Bill Laws. Bill, I'm sure Larry will send it to you. <laughs> Our daughter-in-law, Renee, also selected it as the processional at her wedding to our son, Christian. It's just too majestic to do as a quartet, so I wrote an arrangement for organ and eight-piece brass ensemble. Then I recorded my voice 15 times, varying the EQ and intonation to make it sound like a larger chorus. And then I had to film all 15 choristers individually and synchronize the whole thing together. One lesson I learned is that I don't think I'll do anything quite this elaborate again. Uh, both my audio and video editors were straining under the load. It seemed only appropriate to insert a few images from St. Paul's Cathedral in London. And so, with a certain sense of relief, I present to you my setting of O oh God Beyond All Praising. Mm -hmm. 